Hi guys, Vinny here with you in my kitchen. Uh, so we're gonna be working on some foraged recipes today. So one will be an autumn olive um, pie and the other is a um, hedgehog mushroom and sausage bread. Um, so we're gonna start with the autumn olive pie. So when you make a pie, the first thing you wanna do is macerate your fruit. So we have a big bag of autumn olives here with a couple of leaves that I'm gonna try and pick out um, from yesterday that I picked. Um, you wanna remember that the stem, you wanna to remember to pick out the stems and leaves because if you get a piece of that in your pie, you're not gonna be particularly thrilled. Um, <clears throat> you also wanna give these a good wash. I washed them yesterday before they went in the bag, which is why the bag is still a little bit damp. So we'll put that off to the side and then we're just gonna pick through these real quick and grab um, the leaves that we can and then you're going to be stirring them once you add the sugar as well um, and that will also give you an opportunity to look for some leaves or extra twigs okay so I think that's most of the leaves in here and twigs and if we see any more we'll grab them so we're gonna add a cup of sugar and this cup got a little stuck with the sugar you know sometimes if you don't dry it all the way this can happen but not to fear we are going to be adding some vinegar um, to this pie anyway because you need to add a little bit of acid so this is some homemade vinegar that I made last year with some crab apples and autumn olives that I foraged. Um, and we're just gonna put in about a tablespoon or two into this cup and give it a quick slosh around to get the rest of the sugar in there. I'm gonna get that all, all in there. Okay. Now, uh, we're going to add in a couple of herbs and some spices as well to enhance the flavor of the autumn olives. So what I have here is some basil. My mom was kind enough to grow this for me. And I have a little bit dried here that we're going to put in. Uh, these autumn olives have a flavor similar to tomatoes, uh, but they're a little bit sweeter. And they taste more like fruit than tomatoes do, which really taste like vegetables. But I think the basil will work here quite nicely as well. We're also going to be putting in some Northern Bay. This is a relative of the uh, bay laurel that grows in the Mediterranean, um, but it is a native species here in this part of the United States. So we're going to crumble up two leaves and put those in there. And I also have some mugwort flowers that I picked earlier. Um, and I'm going to throw in just a pinch of these as well. Want to remove any of these kind of bigger sharp stems from any of the plants because this is a dessert and this is going to be a filling and nobody wants a sharp piece of uh, fibrous plant material in their dessert. There's one more thing I want to throw in here before we give this a quick stir and that is um, a little bit of masak which is a spice from Cyprus and the Middle East made from the inside of cherry pits. So they crack them open and grind them up and it's got this really wonderful kind of sweet lemony taste to it that um, really improves the flavor of fruit, especially stone fruit. Autumn olives are not a stone fruit, but I think this will go well with them as they have kind of a similar flavor profile. And I also want to add in some spice bush so any of you who have been following my Instagram posts or have seen me cook before, you know that this is one of my favorite ingredients to use. This is the Northern Spice Bush and these are the berries. Um, I have some drying over here actually and you can see the difference between this year and last year. These are much smaller. Spice Bush goes bad pretty quickly so these are not one we want to carry over year to year. So I try and use all that I pick um, throughout the year. So we're going to throw these in. You want to get your chef's knife out, give them a quick smash, and then a chop. Um, there's some really great flavor in this inner white seed material here. So we're just going to give them a quick chop like this. And then it's going to go in 
here, along with, I think, a little nutmeg as well would be appropriate. So I have some whole nutmeg here, so I'm just going to grind up a little bit. And I think these whole spices are much better um, than the ground. You know, if you've got a sharp knife, this really isn't hard to do. And the reason we're using just a little bit is because nutmeg is very strong. And we really don't want to taste the nutmeg, we just want the little bit of added warmth that it's going to bring. So there we go. Oh, you also want to throw in um, some tapioca or arrowroot flour if you've got it, because that will really help bind the filling together. Um, tapioca is really good at absorbing moisture, so a lot of people will put just plain old wheat flour in here, um, but I'm trying to do this recipe gluten-free. And I also think that the tapioca is much better at sticking the filling together and making it less of a soupy mess than just regular flour or cornstarch. Um, so we're gonna do two nice, maybe three, two and a half um, tablespoons there of the tapioca flour as well. And you know, if you're like me, sometimes you'll throw in the butter for the pie filling now because that's one thing I happen to forget all the time is to throw in the two tablespoons of butter that you need for your pie filling to get it to stick together. So I'm gonna do that now because I'm remembering it. So just take the two tablespoons of butter off from the stick, cut it in half, and then cut it into four. Okay. So now that that's done, we're going to get a spoon and we're going to give this a quick mix just to get all the spices and vinegar and flour and sugar evenly distributed over the fruit um, so that the fruit juice comes out of the fruits and starts to mingle and they all marry together and live happily in this one bowl before they're cooked in the oven into a pie. So you'll know you're done when the fruit um, starts to look a little bit wet like that and a little less frosted. And there we go. So this, you also don't really want to see whole bits of dried sugar pouring out of your spoon. I saw some a minute ago, which I thought I was done, so that's why we're giving this another couple of turns and twists. Okay, so that's done, and we're gonna put this aside for now while we begin the filling for our sausage and mushroom bread. So, um, <clears throat> for the sausage and mushroom bread, we are going to be cooking everything in a large cast iron skillet, which, um, into the skillet, we're gonna put the mushrooms, one onion, some heirloom garlic, some wild garlic that I have preserved in olive oil, also two different kinds of sausage. So I have an Italian sausage right here. I have some Polish sausage right here as well. So we're gonna start by cutting up the garlic um, and the onion. So if you give the cloves a quick smash, they're a lot easier to peel. Forgot to grab the garbage bowl out first. And it's not actually a garbage bowl because we're gonna save the skins from the garlic and the onions um, and make stock out of them because they make a really nice stock and we're trying to eliminate food waste as much as possible. Also, if you can make your own stock, you don't have to buy it from the store. Um, just keep a bag in the freezer of all your food scraps and then when the bag is full boil it down strain it and you've got some really nice stock um and you can be you know picky if you want to separate it into vegetable or fish or meat or uh, whatever you've got um, so i'm going to turn the heat on while the pan for the pan so that it's heating up um while we're chopping our vegetables and meat so we're gonna cut the onions in half and top and tail them. Remember to save not only the skin, but also the top and the tail of the onion because those are gonna go in the stock bag as well. Okay. 
You know, sometimes when you peel onion, I feel guilty about getting the, I used to feel guilty about getting this like top layer off, which is actually still edible. But if you're saving it for stock, you know, you don't have to feel guilty because you know you're still gonna be using it anyway. Into the garbage bowl we go. We're just going to cut up our onion really quickly. Okay, so that's done. We're also going to give the wild garlic a quick chop as well because these are actually a little fibrous. Um, so I'm just going to pull out, you know, whatever comes out on the spoon. That's going to be enough for this. And then just give them a quick chop. These have a really nice um, flavor. It's a little more mild than the uh, regular garlic, but I really quite like it. Um, especially when it's mixed together with all these other volumes. So we're going to do that. Quick wash. I'm actually going to use a little of the oil that we've got in here um, in the frying pan to cook with. So the skillet has heated up and now as you can see it's nice and hot. The oil is bubbling right as soon as we put it in here. So we're going to put in a couple of tablespoons of this oil from here and then we're going to add in our onions and garlic. And give them a quick shuffle in the pan. We're also going to throw in just a little bit of salt and some black pepper. Because if you season as you go, then you don't have to do so much all at the end. Okay. So while this is beginning to cook, we're going to give our mushrooms a quick chop. So as I said, these are hedgehog mushrooms that I've got here. And I'm reserving that one because I'm going to throw it in a tincture um, for some medicine. Actually, these two. Because they're also a little old. And we're just going to give them a quick rough chop. this and then these will also go into the pot to cook down. Mm, smells really good. All right, so while this is cooking, we're gonna take out the sausage. So I have two different kinds of sausage here, as I said. This is some Italian sausage um, from the local Italian shop that I went to um, earlier this week. And we're gonna cut it in half this way and then into pieces like this, because we're actually gonna want it to break apart a little bit. This sausage is raw. The other one I'm using in here is cooked. So that will be enough of this one. Just open it up and give it a quick chop. We don't need to chop it too fine because as you can see it's raw and it's already starting to break apart. So this is going right into the pot here can pull bits of skin, uh, the sausage skin out, or leave them in. They're good for you. And we don't like to waste. So just kind of use the spoon to break up the sausage a little bit as well. 